If you've ever poured some fuel into your car, used a hand sanitizer, or even enjoyed a glass of wine, chances are you've come across ethanol. And if you've ever read about toxic alcohol or chemical poisoning, you've probably heard of methanol too. At first glance, these two substances sound almost identical. Ethanol, methanol, just one letter apart. But that single letter can mean the difference between something that keeps you warm or something that can literally kill you. So today, let's break down the truth behind these two alcohols, how they're made, where they're used, and why one belongs in your car tank while the other definitely shouldn't end up in your drink. All that right here on History of Simple Things. Let's start simple. Both ethanol and methanol are types of alcohol. Chemically speaking, alcohols are organic compounds that have at least one hydroxyl group, basically an oxygen and hydrogen bonded together, attached to a carbon atom. But here's the key. The number of carbon atoms makes a big difference. Methanol has just one carbon atom. Its chemical formula is CH3OH. Ethanol has two carbon atoms, making its formula C2H5OH. That tiny structural change might seem minor, but it completely alters how each substance behaves, how it smells, tastes, burns, and most importantly, how it reacts with the human body. Both ethanol and methanol can be produced naturally or synthetically, but in very different ways. Ethanol is the familiar one, it's produced when yeast ferment sugars, like glucose or sucrose, into alcohol and carbon dioxide. It's the same process that gives us beer, wine, and spirits. Humanity has been doing this for thousands of years, long before chemistry labs existed. Methanol, on the other hand, doesn't come from fermentation in nature. Traditionally, it was made by heating wood in the absence of air, a process called destructive distillation. That's why it used to be called wood alcohol. Nowadays, methanol is mostly produced from natural gas through chemical reactions involving carbon monoxide and hydrogen. So while ethanol comes from biological fermentation, methanol comes from chemical synthesis. One is nature's brew. The other is more of a laboratory creation. Now, what's really interesting is that both substances have found major uses, but in very different industries. Ethanol is best known as the alcohol we drink, in moderation, of course. It's what gives beverages like wine and whiskey their intoxicating effects. But beyond the bar, ethanol has a huge industrial role, too. It's used as a solvent, a disinfectant, and even as a renewable fuel. In fact, if you've ever seen gas stations offering E10 or E85 fuel, that E stands for ethanol. It's blended with gasoline to create cleaner burning fuel, reducing emissions and our reliance on pure fossil fuels. Methanol, however, isn't something you'd ever want to drink. It's used primarily as an industrial chemical, often as a solvent, antifreeze, or in the production of formaldehyde, which is used in plastics and building materials. Methanol is also used as a fuel, particularly in racing cars and as a potential alternative energy source. But here's the dark side. While methanol can power engines, it can also destroy living cells. Which brings us to one of the most important differences between the two. If ethanol and methanol are both alcohols, why is one drinkable while the other is deadly? It all comes down to how our bodies metabolize them. When you drink ethanol, your liver breaks it down into acetaldehyde and then into acetic acid, which your body can safely process. Although drinking too much still leads to hangovers, liver damage, and other health problems. But when you ingest methanol, your body follows a similar process with a tragic twist. Methanol is converted into formaldehyde and then into formic acid, both of which are highly toxic. 
These compounds damage the optic nerve, leading to blindness, and in higher doses, they can shut down the central nervous system and cause death. What's even scarier is that methanol poisoning doesn't show symptoms immediately. Someone might drink it thinking it's ethanol, say from homemade liquor or mislabeled alcohol, and feel fine at first. But hours later, as the body processes it, the real damage begins. Now, if they look and smell similar, how do you actually tell ethanol and methanol apart? Visually, you can't. They're both clear, colorless liquids. But there are a few ways to distinguish them. Smell. Ethanol has a slightly sweet, spirit-like smell. Think of hand sanitizer or vodka. Methanol smells more chemical, like a mild solvent. But don't rely on smell alone. It's not safe to inhale deeply. Flame test. Ethanol burns with a blue flame that has a faint yellow tip. Methanol burns with a pale blue flame that's almost invisible in daylight. Chemical tests. In labs, chemists can use reagents or spectroscopic methods to confirm which alcohol is which. In practical terms, though, the safest rule is this. If you're not absolutely sure what kind of alcohol it is, don't drink it. So if we've known about the dangers of methanol for so long, why does confusion still happen? One reason is that both are simply called alcohols. And in everyday language, people often assume all alcohols are the same. Another reason is economic. Methanol is cheaper to produce than ethanol, so counterfeiters sometimes use it illegally to make fake spirits. Education and awareness make all the difference here. Knowing that alcohol doesn't always mean safe to drink can save lives. So the next time you hear the word alcohol, remember it's not just one thing. It's a whole spectrum of chemistry. And sometimes one extra carbon atom can make all the difference between life and death. At the end of the day, knowing the difference between ethanol and methanol isn't complicated. It's just essential. Two similar-looking liquids, two very different outcomes. A little knowledge can keep you safe. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other bingeable channels. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.